Good morning. I think Diana said it well. We do um, feel supported in a community like this. So I'm going to ask you to do something very uncomfortable, and that is to fill in these first two rows. Come on forward, everyone. The reason being sitting next to people in community is very important to feel the warmth of their bodies, to feel the love in their hearts. Yeah, first rows are good. Extra points for first rows. Come on. You can do it. OK. Over here. There's seats over here. Come on, come together. This is coming together. Well, you did pretty good. <laughs> Paul and I were on a, a cruise for the last two weeks in the Great Lakes. And the last day on the ship at breakfast, someone said, isn't it incredible about Reading? And I went, what? Because I had been out of contact the whole two weeks. And so when we landed and saw the news and everything going on, it was just, um, we were stunned. And it's really challenging to get your mind wrapped around it and your arms wrapped around it and thinking of all of you. So there's a couple things in the back. One, you received a prayer from Creative Thought magazine. And the other is back there, and it's a list of evacuation centers as of this morning. So if you or anyone needs to go to any of these places, this is the current list. And I had this wonderful talk because <clears throat> Paul said, what? The list is in the back if you need it. Okay, thank you. Um, where was I? Oh, so before I left, Paul said, you know, we're getting back the day before you talk, so you should write your talk ahead of time. So I had it all written out, and it's pretty well useless this morning. And it was entitled, You Are a Spiritual Broadcasting System. And we know that because we know how we observe other people and how they might be feeling. And I think you'd agree that the traumatic events of the past few days um, have the ability to change anybody who's experienced them directly or indirectly. And I know we've, I've been, soon I've been keeping a list of all the people who've had to evacuate, who've lost homes, you know, tracking people, where, where did they go when we knew their area was evacuated, and, and doing our best to communicate uh, to them and see how people are doing. Because it's easy to get emotionally drained in a situation like this, very easy. And it's because of the wildfire's unpredictability. Even we were watching the fire department this morning uh, saying, well, it's still moving out here, it's contained here, but it's moving here, and if the wind comes here, then look out here, and it's just like, wow, how do you get your, your mind around that? And so we have to know somewhere in our hearts we're safe. We're safe in God's love. Whenever I have a situation that is kind of mind-boggling, I always think there's got to be a bigger meaning here for me. There's got to be something about life that I need to be more aware of. And right now, I think it's love. Uh, love and compassion and empathy and uh, being there for people in any way I can. So after service, what I'm going to I'm going to invite the practitioners and ministers to set up a little circle in different areas here, and if you would just like to come and share your experience, because talking about it really helps. We're not going to judge it. We're not going to ask questions. We're not going to give advice. We just want to hear you talk about your experience because this fire is not over. And the people who evacuate, who knows when they'll get back in? The people who've lost homes, then you know there's a bigger process there. So we want to be supportive. And sometimes we just need to vent and hear other people and see and understand, okay, this is, this is how I can see this and how I can find my way in being helpful to the whole situation. 
a fire like this often brings up a lot of insecurity because of its unpredictability. And sometimes that comes from not realizing how explosive these fires can be. I worked in the timber industry for 40 years and um, I've had enough of it, <laughs> but I understand it. And then there's a lot of anxiety if you've been given five minutes to leave your home. Barbara Leger, a good one. Five minutes, boom, you gotta go. And then there's a tra the trauma of losing everything but your life. That's a real challenging one. So it's important to listen to each other's experience and understand the emotions behind it, to be in the present moment with people. It might be your neighbors, might be your family. But you know, the, the beautiful thing right now is you're here in this room, surrounded by love, and there's nothing to be afraid of. So you can let that emotion go. Just feel the love in this room. Because wherever you go, you're always in the present moment. You're always in the present time. And we can get very caught up in the TV stories, the pictures, they're just hard to imagine. But I have to bring myself back, wait, I'm in the present moment, I'm here, I'm safe. Now I can do what I can do and pray for the firefighters. Send my love to those working in evacuation centers. That's what I can do. We can talk and pray with you. And I know while I've been gone, Sue and Charlie and many others have been reaching out to anyone who could use some help in finding out what to do. And I so appreciate that. Because when they were on vacation, I had my own, not fires, but <laughs> brush fires maybe to deal with. And, and I know how that feels. In Shasta County, we have many, many services and these large evacuation centers for people. And you know what we do best? All I have to think about is our parking lot sale. We love to get rid of stuff. We love to give. We love to do that. And everyone who's evacuated out of an evacuation center can use a blanket, can use a pair of sheets, can use, the children can use some toys. Anyone who's lost their home, my goodness, what a need for months and months. And so what we want to do is accept donations and we'll make sure they get to the right person at the right center in the right place who will appreciate that offering. So this week, please, anything you can donate, we'll take and we'll find it, the right and perfect person to um, feel our love, feel our caring. As I said, I worked in the timber industry for 40 years and I remember when I saw the pictures of the car fire uh, as we were landing in San Francisco, it brought up that gut emotion in me. Let me at it, I can help, I can help. And yet that's that gut emotion I think most of us have. Yet when I worked in the industry and we had a fire on company property, I said, I'm here to help. And they said, wait a minute, you're in the office. We have trained firefighters to do this, and they're really, really good. But you can help by making coffee for people. You can help by doing what you can do in the office. So I, I greatly admire firefighters for their knowledge of how the fire moves and when to just watch it and then when to move in and try to stop it. I was listening to the radio yesterday, and. One of the firefighters said, yeah, there was this one place out in um, near Whiskey Town and the fire was going downhill. And he was kind of surprised because fires usually run uphill and then they cut a dozer line across the crest of the hill to stop the fire. I thought, oh, you don't remember the fountain fire, the one that headed from Reading to Burney. And a friend of mine was at the Burney power plant standing on the wood pile with a hose. <laughs> But that fire came over the hill, over the dozer line, and it was so powerful, all it did was heat up 50 feet of trees in front of it till they exploded, boom, and then that heated up 50 feet more of trees, boom, and it marched down the hill. 
toward my friend who's standing there with a the hose. But the power plant land was very cleared, and as soon as it hit the dirt, it marched right around the power plant on into Bernie. He'll never forget that. That's the intensity of it. I think I would still stand there with the hose, but I'm not sure how long I would do that. And if you're new at all to the Reading area, you may not know that the whole Whiskey Town area in West Reading is called a wildland urban interface. We call it a WUI. WUI is kind of a cute name. It's not as intense as a wildland inter urban interface. But CAL FIRE has these maps. The WUI is mapped all over the state. They know where the conflagrations are going to be because they're intense, filled with brushed, small trees, dead trees, haven't been cleared out for decades, right for the right spark. We're also in a Mediterranean climate, as you, most of you probably know, where it rains in the winter, and then in the spring, the grasses I know in our neighborhood get this high, and then the trees get very, very dry, and it, it creates what's called ladder fuels. If it, there's a spark on the ground, it goes right up through the weeds up through the low branches of the tree into the dry treetops and they explode and send sparks for miles. And that's why, yeah, there may be a perimeter, but it could go a couple miles out of the perimeter at any notice, which is why we have the windows open here this morning. We want to know if a spark lands in the dry creek bed of Churn Creek while we're in here. I don't think that'll happen, but it makes me feel comfortable. I could see out there and, and look and see it's okay. And we're going to keep the children in at 10.30 service. We'll keep them in the social hall. It's good to keep children close, you know, when, when you feel a little uncertainty. I've got great paragraphs all crossed out that you don't need to hear about today. <laughs> but we know that our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our faith, and our fears make an imprint on our environment. They make an imprint on the person you're sitting next to. The most important thing I learned aboard ship with people from all over the country um, was to be conscious of what I was broadcasting. Friendship or, yeah, I'm sitting at a table by myself, leave me alone, you know, that kind of thing, the difference. Because two weeks on a ship with 90 people that you never knew about, you meet really great people, then you meet people that, oh, don't sit with them <laughs> tomorrow, you know, there's that kind of energy going on. So I was always uh, conscious because of this talk, what is the wavelength, what is the energy I'm sending? And we had a, a just wonderful experience. In fact, when a couple in their late 80s, <laughs> Paul's early 80s, but this couple in their late 80s has already been emailing us. They kind of adopted us on the ship and wanted to sit with us all the time and have cocktails with us. And they're very sweet. And um, so they've already been contacting us to see how we're doing. So this is the intense reality of what we broadcast. The intense reality of what brought you here this morning instead of saying it's too smoky outside. The intense reality of being in a space that has a spiritual basis for what we're seeing and observing. A spiritual basis for just sitting next to one another on a day like this. I was thinking of Damien last night because he works for uh, Reading Radio and they have six radio stations. They've got rock, they've got country, they've got sports, they've got, I don't know, you have a few others there that I probably wouldn't listen to like hip hop or something, but no offense, but um, it's, we're like that. We have the ability to change our broadcasting station if we don't like what we're seeing in ourselves, in ourselves. The reason is what we give out comes back to us. And that's the most important thing to remember. Not that I want to be sure I get something back, but that would be almost like trying to manipulate the world and then we get manipulated and we wonder why. <laughs> no, it's the true essence of who we are, the true love. So for the next few weeks, please daily pray for those firefighters. They give it their all. They are so courageous, courageous. And the people at the Red Cross, 
who are helping set up all these evacuation centers. Because in the midst of this past year's national upheaval, and I heard plenty of angst on board ship about it, although I never contributed to those discussions because I want to contribute what I believe the future holds, which is much greater than that. I believe all this is helping us care in a greater way for one another in a world where too often we just want to do our own thing and be left alone or do something to others that we don't like what they're doing or judge others we don't like what they're doing. But this type of upheaval in our community is close enough that it brings out the best in us. It does today and it will tomorrow and the next few months and weeks. And the reason is we're being guided by a divine intelligence that created the whole universe out of love, the core energy of the universe, love. So when we're shaken off our regular path of this is good, this is bad, to wait a minute, it's time for me to get off that pedestal and come and be of help. So however you can help this week, one thing I want to do is go to these evacuation centers and say, what is the most important thing you need? Email it to everyone and see what we can do and then have someone take that, those gifts to others. So there'll be a lot to do this week and we just encourage you to help us because when you help us, when you help others, we also help ourselves. This loving intelligence that created the universe forever seeks to bring us inner peace also. And it, that's another way in situations like that where we get a sense of inner peace. I've done something. I've reached out to someone. I've helped someone. I've given of myself. So what else could I say that would be <laughs> any more helpful than that? but I'd like to read this prayer. I think it says a lot of really good things this morning. That God is love. This is the day. This is the time to move into the center of the all-powerful energy of God. The divine light beams through chaos, problems, and all beings. For there is just one life, and that is God's life, and that is my life. The essence of this great one is unconditional love. All is love. Life is love. People are love. All there is is love. Within this one life is the innate joy and happiness that always wants to be expressed. It's all wisdom. It's all good. It's all God. Life is so I take this moment to remember who I am, the gloriousness of being one with the divine. It moves through me with grace and ease. Everyone is an individualized expression of this God essence. In this moment, I claim that life is bringing peace and harmony to the surface of every person, animal, and condition. Any hearts that are hurting, any minds that are confused, are being laced with life's goodness and God's love. Strength and courage are grounded in spiritual knowingness. In this moment, truth and reality are realized. Walking with spirit has brought unconditional love and harmony to this moment. With heartfelt gratitude for the power and energy of spirit in all of life, I release this prayer with certainty that the action has already taken place and these words are already manifest in this moment. I accept this reality and so it is. So at the end of service, we'll make some little circles around and come and talk, come and share. Know you are loved.